One of the great things about this competition is that we're able to put out a ton of functionality in a really short time. The scope and scale of warfare and the potential for you know thousands of munitions to be employed that have to be perfectly timed and planned in very short operational cycles, I'm going to need to rely more and more on uh, machines and algorithms to, to give me at least a start. The biggest challenge we face in this competition is the collaborative nature of the agents. This is a swarming artificial intelligence competition. In competition one, I think that for us it was a lot of integration into this Coliseum environment and um, getting familiar with the scenario. And this uh, competition we really translated um, into more uh, geographic regions, a different IADS lay down more fixed targets. They added pop-up targets and things like that to see how your agents dynamically adapt to changes in those environments. A lot of these companies are starting from essentially zero with um, a limited basis of knowledge and just training themselves and their systems to perform well in a very complex scenario uh, that would be challenging for even the best human operators to navigate. So it's, it's really impressive to see that they're coming up with solutions that maybe we may or may not have thought of with our previous experience. Before this, I had to ask, you know, what is a tur, what is a tell, what's the difference? Um, and through this project, I've learned about that. I've learned a little bit of the domain. And I think I'm also hearing some of these warfighters coming in talking about reward shaping, talking about cost functions, and understanding the, the terms that we use in our field. So I think having that dialogue is really important. It's very important to understand what leads to trust from operators. We can say that the system works incredibly well, and we can show them some sort of information about the results on a scoreboard, but if they don't know how it's working, what data it was trained on, what are the faults in the system, they're not going to want to use it. The difference between Challenge 1 and Challenge 2 um, was a major functionality change, and now what we're seeing for Competition 3 is kind of a shift in paradigm. So we knew a lot about the laydown in Challenge 1, we knew a lot about the laydown in Challenge 2, and now we're moving towards something that we, we haven't seen before. We'll definitely change our approach going into the next challenge. Being here, hearing the other contestants, seeing their approaches, seeing what worked for them, what didn't work for them, it's a learning opportunity for us, so we will definitely take advantage of the information we've gained here. I think overall, you know, the one thing that really comes out of this is trying to think through the future force. What is the actual design going to look like to enable these kind of technologies?
acquisition effort has been structured as a competition very deliberately. And the intent there is we want to maintain the competitive environment throughout this program. So obviously what that does is it brings fresh ideas and incentivizes the competitors and the vendors ultimately to bring new ideas and modernize at the speed that they're capable of modernizing and continue to compete for their, sp their spot at the table. We're trying to build an autonomous system that can operate tactically at a theater level. So it's not a individual platform trying to do something autonomously or a computer vision algorithm trying to identify something autonomously. It's a series of platforms collaborating together over a wide area to strike a wide variety of targets with a dynamic threat environment. This is a prototype for future acquisitions, we think. You know, if we can show that we can open up a competition quickly, bring in a lot of high quality competitors rapidly, give them the challenge problem, turn the crank on bringing the solution, having the means of automatically evaluating them in a quick manner, there's no reason this couldn't transform the way that the DoD acquires new technology.